and it's it's fascinating to fascinating to hear the impact of 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 being together because that's mm. what that's what I pick up on and it's maybe we should make this into the intro then this is me and Caspian having had a a group session conversation with Randy and Steve and Inma from the second season of Tankispian just wanting to get together and and share a little bit of the experience of it. And it is. It really is wonderful. Yeah. I mean, these, these conversations, the, the funny thing about your, I want to say your podcast, because it is yours. Um, is that even though you have one-on-one -on -one conversations with all of these people, it is a community. Uh, as we said, I've, I've never spoken to either Inma, uh, Inma Steve, or Reddy. Um, yet I feel part of a community. And I think that's, that's something that I picked up on from, from all three of them. Yeah. Is that, that it is a community, and I think that you do that very well in creating that space. And, and everyone does it very well in, in participating as well. It is a wonder. It's a treat. It is. It is a treat. For sure. Yeah. Well. Enjoy. Over Should to I you. Take it away? Yeah, take it away. Sure. So, so what the the purpose of me being here? I I should probably start out with that. Is last time around we we or rather the first series that we did of uh, the Tankespian podcast. Um, Helena wanted to do sort of a sum up or or a gathering or. A meeting with with all of the conversation partners that she'd had over over almost half a year, six months, um, and we agreed that that it, it's probably quite impractical to to have Helena lead that conversation. So so that just to set the scene, that's why I'm here um, to sort of I have some questions, some some things that I want to talk to all of you about and and see where what you react. At the same time, it's not an interview. I'm, I'm, we're not here to, for me to just ask questions to, to you guys. Um, so whenever you feel like it, pop and, and um, come on and share things. Um, so really, I just want to start off with, with Helena saying something about what you know, I was a part of this process, but but both for for the people listening and and maybe even for Reddy and Steve, um, with this season, what were your, what was what was your thought going into this season, and and sort of thinking about the people and the both having conducted a series um, on beforehand, um, but but sort of give us give us your thoughts on. What led up to this season? Mm. So the first season was, was, uh, was an experiment, really. Not knowing, you know, how will this work? Will it work? Is there anything to talk about? You know, is there anybody who will think it's interesting to, to think of or to listen to, like long rambling, meandering conversations without a purpose, without a goal? Um, and throughout that season, I kind of figured out how, um, how it impacted me and having this roundup session then really made me see that 
even though I kind of get five times as much time because I do this with five groups, right? So I have 25 conversations. The impact of the people that I'd been conversing with kind of was mind blowing. So that really got me one thinking, how can I ever, how can I stop having these long meandering conversations with those people, you know, um, but I want to bring in some new people too. And I, you know, I could do this as a full-time job. I could just stack on people and you know, release a conversation every day. <laughs> that wouldn't be very practical, but the one thing that I was thinking going into this season was that I wanted to play with also having more than two people, me and one person. So I got Matthew and Enma quite early, already a couple of months into the, the first season, I asked them and they said yes, because we had been having trio conversations and they always turn out really wonderful. And then that was it. I didn't get or make or create more trio sets. Um, and I, you know, I asked people as people kind of pop up into my, my, um, uh, my mind, me and Andy met on Twitter slash Instagram because Caspian found him, found a piece he'd written and said, maybe you'd like this dude. And I really like that dude. And we had a conversation on his <laughs> podcast and it was like, oh, I want to talk more with him. Freddie, I met on Twitter. A couple of hours later, we had our first racket conversation online. And, you know, before we ended that half hour meetup, I'd asked if he wanted to be on the, on the podcast. And the, the next day we recorded our first conversation, you know, so it was like, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's just this jumble of, of people and how I've come to you. And I think now sitting here with um you know almost having wrapped the 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 second season i have one i have two more conversations to do i have andy and you see the fifth once with them otherwise it's done it's in the bag i've realized how how there is similarity. It is meandering conversations with people that I find interesting and, and stuff. And how at the same time, it's like each of us come into a, a, a certain stream. It's like me and Steve, we have been going inwards a lot. That has been kind of the thing that we've come back to over and over again. Me and Reddy, we've been also doing inwards, but also outwards, we have been kind of going in, out, in, out, and we've been playing a lot. Um, so that is something that I just recently um, really started to think about. And again, I'm sitting here now thinking, oh, how will I survive if I don't have my monthly shot of ready conversations? You know, it's like, how can I, can I not do this? And I will do it because we will stay in touch. I mean, that for me is just, it just feels like a given. Uh, it's like, there's no way I, I don't want my, my regular hit of ready. Um, so I think that's, so now I've started to think about the third season. I've asked one person and I have a go on that one. I have, a, you know, so my mind, it's kind of brewing um, and I'm thinking about it and I haven't quite, um, yeah, it hasn't crystallized yet, but I'm sure it will fall into place. So I think that's. That's it. And the, the, the 25 conversations I had the first time, 
the difference between not having that type of conversation and having them is bigger, of course, than having that, those 24, 25 conversations with my first season and now my second season. But the, the impact or the import of these types of conversations is just hammered home hmm. for me. It's a really nice sentiment. I'm curious to Why know. Why you what... applauding your heart? Yeah, sorry. You go ready. No, no, go on, Gatsby. All right. I said, while, while, while Hanela was pulling a heart out, I'd already pinged my agent. I said, I need to get on the next season. Get me in now. I don't care what you do. Get me in on the next season. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I, I, I would just like to hear Reddy and, and Steve, what did you guys think when, when Helena asked you to be on the podcast? Um, did you listen to the first season at all, or did you go in sort of head first into the deep part of the swimming pool? Ah, uh, I'm going to let Steve take this one. Okay. Um, I had, I had listened to several of the conversations. Yes. Um, I had listened to, um, and I'd also listened to parts of quite a number of them. Um, Helena posts short snips of them as well. And so those are, those are teasers for sure. Appetizers for sure. So, you know, I, I, I'd seen probably a couple of dozen of the small pieces at various points and then had gone in and listened to several of the longer conversations, either in, in, in their entirety or like 30 minute or 40 minute chunks of them at various points when I would have time to just put them on and have them going while I'm doing something else. So, and often, often I found myself not able to do something else. I would put it on thinking, all right, I'll just, I'll just, I'll paint or I'll clean up my studio table or something while I'm listening. And I'd be standing right here, watch, watching faces as well as listening. And, um, so they were quite, they were quite gripping. So when, when Helena asked me to be part of the second season, I was delighted and honored to be part of that. Um, and was just, you know, I was hoping I would, you know, measure up that I would somehow have, have good enough stuff to say or whatever. Um, and yet at the same time, every time we would have one of the conversations, Elaine, I would have to kind of school myself to don't, don't, don't overdo it. Don't, <laughs> don't overthink it. Don't, you know, whatever, just sort of, just sort of let it, just let it happen. Right. Mm -hmm. And so all of that was excellent for me. It was all good practice to do all that. Um, it's, it's been, it's been an amazing experience and I have pages and pages of notes from these conversations because as Helena said, we've been. We've been doing somewhat similar work. I would say it's kind of parallel work, right? Um, and, and so things that Helena had discovered about herself or that she was, things she was doing or moves she would make inside that would enable something else to fall into place or to open up. Um, many of those were really useful for me to hear as well. So I was just furiously drawing notes sometimes during the conversations because they were so useful to my own journey. So, um, and, and Helena is so easy to talk to. So it's just, it's been great. That's really nice. Ready. What did you think when, when you were asked, I mean, you had, you had the racket before. Yep. Apparently not even 24 hours apart. Yes. <laughs> Barely even two hours apart. I think it's just like one minute. We're just like on Twitter. Yeah, it's not even like a DM. It was just more like a, like a conversation on the feed. And before you knew it, we were on a racket call and, and I, you know, it was like, you know, you know, the saying that, you know, it's like a breath of fresh air, but Helena was more like a torrential mm -hmm. storm. Right? So it wasn't like a breath of fresh air. It was just all like, shh, <laughs> all of a sudden I'm in the storm and I'm like, whoa, what's <laughs> happening here? Right. So I was literally, I mean, like literally swept off my feet because it just went on. And I'm even now, right now, like, I feel like we're still in that storm, right? Like it's like, now I know why storms are named after them. Always have like a hurricane, you know, hurricane Helena. It's like, you know, just literally there was no planning. And like you said, it, I didn't even dive into this headlong. I was swept away off my feet. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and yeah, there was absolutely no planning. I mean, like, I'm, I'm really glad Helena, you know, takes the effort to do all the planning in place, the calendars, the emails, the invites and all of that, because I'm extremely, you know, all over the place person. And now I can blame it. Oh, I was just swept away by the storm. It wasn't my fault. <laughs> <laughs> but it does feel incredibly exhilarating, like every conversation you know, like I've always, when I'm watching, you know, series on streaming sites, it's like, there's always this, oh, you know, one episode gets so one, you're like, oh my God, I wonder what's going to happen next. Right. Mm. But those are scripted. Those are scripted. Those are mm. edited specifically to create that figure in the mind that says, oh my God, like it's got its tentacles into, right? Like that's a whole bunch of effort by a whole bunch of people <laughs> working to dig their you know, hooks into you. But in this case, it was so spontaneous. It was so incredibly magical. And it was, it was something that, you know, it's not something you can really plan. It's not. I mean, you can plan all the, you know, getting people on the same call at the same time, but you can't plan that connection. You can't you know, create that serendipity. It just happened, right? And I feel like that's, that's just how our conversations have been. And I'm so glad that, you know, that there's like, Episode one, there's episode two, there's season one, there's season two, because I feel like, ah, this is just getting better and better. And I wonder what's going to happen next. I wonder what's going to happen next. I wonder what I'm going to say next. I wonder what Elena's going to come <laughs> up with. <next. laughs> That's really nice. Thank you. Hey, Inma. Hi, Hi Inma. Inma. Yay. You made it. You made it. Can you hear us? Probably Maybe not, not yet. Not yet. Ian. There we go. <laughs> Retard factory. <Oops. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. That we said if the battery low. <laughs> <laughs> I love how well this speaks to, to what you were just saying. Ready? <laughs> it really isn't scripted. <laughs> and it was recharged battery too. Exactly. <laughs> so welcome in my, I'm so happy you could make it. Thank you. I thought it was a 12th. It my was my 12th. Yeah. Yep. So we have what, four different 12s in here. Yep. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, yeah, yeah. Yep. So there's no, no blame in, in mistaking any, I mean, you had four twelves to choose from and, and you, you made it to the right one eventually. <laughs> How are you in my, I, I'm okay. I was in the garden since very early in the morning. So I'm pretty energetic right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's so nice. Fully judged. Uh, yeah. Yes. Good. We were just speaking about well, uh, going into this series of of the podcast season, um, and and sort of talking about what brought everyone into it, and and the expectations and and the feelings before going into it. Um, I would love to hear what you what what you were thinking, feeling, um, going into your conversations because you you're part of the triad of yes. Helena, Inma and Matthew. Matthew is not with us in this call. Um but I would love to hear what you what you have to to say about it. Um when when I got the invitation from Helena, I didn't we have talked so many times. <laughs> I didn't think it twice. I didn't think, oh, it's going to be a podcast and it's going to, everyone's going to hear, uh, listen to this and blah, blah, and I'm going to be public. <laughs> I didn't think of any of that. I just thought, yes, let's have a conversation like many other times. Mm. And then, um, even in the moment of the first, uh, re recording, I didn't pay attention to that. We were just talking, just having a conversation and it was really interesting. So 
it was right after that <laughs> when I thought, oh my God, this is going to go live so at some point. And then Helena sent me the, the link to listen to it. And I listened two minutes maybe and I stopped it and I was like oh my god what have I done <laughs> what have I done this is just ridiculous I can't do that anymore <laughs> what have I done so I told her and I said look uh, uh, this is horrible this feeling I'm masking to it was like that both of us oh my god I, my voice really really I don't I can't do that anymore but then she said just listen to it, listen to it, go, keep going listening. And then I did, and I was like, oh, wow, that's great. <laughs> mm. Because I didn't focus on the sound of my voice or I didn't focus anymore mm. on what, the technicality of it. And I didn't focus in, in I just focused in the conversation and the conversation was really interesting much more da than me, just me. It was, I was part of something bigger. So, yeah. And then from, for the next one, I just wasn't looking forward to it. <laughs> That's Every lovely. It's hmm. lovely. Yeah, because it was interesting. Yes. When I asked you to, we had just had a, we are you, yes. me, in my me, Matthew and Steve uh, are all in the creative community, and uh, there's a there's a little group called the Dragon Problem Solvers. So we had uh, one of those conversations, a meetup, and it was just me in my and Matthew, as it had been a couple of times before, and I got the thought that hmm. I could do a trio on the podcast. So I waited until the end of that conversation and I said, I have a question to ask you and you do not have to answer it now. You can think about it and you're absolutely free to say no. Uh, and you both were like, come on, what is it? And I said, would you want to be on the podcast? And you both said, yes. You know, it's like. <laughs> I don't even have to think about it. And I'm going, they really should think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any of that, any of us. Uh, no. As far as I know, Matthew, we were like no. straight away. Yeah, you were yeah, straight away. Let's Just, okay, sure. And I was like, yeah, okay, okay, there we go. And then I remember when the first one was out, you responded saying, oh, my God. Um, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, chill. Um, and I'm so happy that you said yes, and I'm so happy that you stayed with it. And I'm so happy that you listened to it because that's one of the things that I've understood. I, I don't know if I'm really odd. Many people who do podcasts, they don't listen to their podcasts. And I'm going, what the heck? You know, there's some good stuff going on here. It's really interesting. And also, if I'm on another person's podcast, I listen to it. And I don't know how many people say, no, I never listen to, my, to, to me on a podcast. And I'm going, part of, for me, part of what has made me really comfortable being here is that I've listened to myself. I've <laughs> listened to it and I... You know, it's like I have gotten so used to hearing my voice. And not only that, I've kind of come to like listening to my voice. You know, I have some good stuff to say now and again. Mm -hmm. And it, and I mean, honoring that, I think is really good rather than, oh, no, I can't listen to myself. That would be so uncomfortable. It's like, you know, start to move and dance with the fact that this is me. This is how I come across. Mm -hmm. Um. I like that. should also be said that you weren't as comfortable with it in the beginning as you are now. Precisely. Precisely. And I mean, I've, I've, I have done a lot of work with this. I did my first podcast that was just sent out to, to the world in 2013 or something. And I, that was something that I was kind of reading 
I recorded and re-recorded and re-recorded 50 times because I was so unhappy with the way that I sounded, you know? So yes, it has been almost 10 years of this, but the more I do it, the, the, you know, the more comfortable I am with it because I also listen to it. For mm. me, that's true. At least I also listen to it so that I, you know, I don't have that, that distance between me and myself. Mm. It is now it's like, no, I've come closer to myself because of this. Mm. For sure. Ready. You were going to say something about listening to yourself, but it looked like you, you were saying something about it. Like, you know, it just struck me when you, you, you started the conversation, you said this isn't an interview, right? Like, this isn't an interview, this is like an inner, like I feel that every time I'm in this conversation, it's like, I'm just speaking, I'm listening to what Helena's saying, I'm saying something, the words are coming out of my mouth, and I can, it's almost like I cannot hear myself say it, or I hear myself saying it after I've said it, right? It's already out there. And so I'm, I'm kind of getting an inner view into what's happening inside of me, right? Because what's happening inside of me is now outside of me. It's out there and now I can see it clearer. It's harder to see inwards. It's easier to see things out when the same thing that's inside is outside looks so much clearer, right? And especially through the lens of someone else, like I now see what I'm saying through the lens of Elena's question, right? And that becomes the conversation that's helping me bring clarity to my own thinking, own thoughts, what's happening, what do I really believe, what do I really think, what am I imagining right now? And it's almost like the moment it comes out, it becomes an interactive experience. It's now a multiplayer game. It's not just these thoughts that's happening inside of my head like this single player game that I'm always playing. Right? It's like, okay, this is what I think, this is what I believe, this is what I think others think of me. You know, it's all revolving around me, 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 me. But now the moment I'm, I'm having this conversation, it's like, oh, so that's what Helen, that's what she's saying. And that's what she thinks of what I'm saying, mm -hmm. right? It's so refreshing. And, and this is something I'm missing out on listening to myself post record. That's something I haven't done. I've recorded over 400 oh, sure. you know, that kids, <laughs> but I haven't heard a single one of them. You and should. now. Yeah, I, I really think, I mean, that's beautiful because what you're saying is almost like, I'm like, I tend to oscillate between these two extremes. I'm either completely narcissistic and I'm like, oh my God, I love my wife. Who is that guy? He's awesome. Like, wow, he should be on the Joe Rogan podcast. Like, you know, all I'm like, oh my God, dude, you suck. Get off the bike already, right? Like, it's always these two extremes. It's like, I'm never able to, you know, I don't give myself the time to sink into that conversation. Just soak in that conversation. Forget judging, forget being criticizing. Just soak in it like a part. So I think that's something I definitely go back, post this call, you know, line up all of Helena's podcasts and you put them in a you know, playlist and go like, all right, now I'm going to soak in the bath and listen to <laughs> That's yeah. really nice. I think you end up, I mean, for me, I have found that these podcasts with myself, you know, with, with Helena and myself, listening to the one that, cause I listened, I think two of the five so far, um, in, in their entirety, it's a time capsule for one thing. It's a conversation, especially since Helena and I have been talking about our inner journeys and they literally are a journey that's got some linearity to it. Um, going back and listening to an episode from a month ago or two months ago has been a gift because I go back and I'm like, oh, wow, I'm not, I'm not there anymore. Now I'm over here. And you don't have a sense of that progression when it's going on day to day, but you do when you get a, you know, a, a gap like that. And then the other thing is, you know, like you said, Reddy, you, you, you have now a dance with yourself as well as with Helena. Because now it's a three-way conversation between you that just, all you can do is listen. Although I don't, I, I talk, I talk even when I'm all, all by myself, I talk to what's going on on the screen. So, um, so I, I, I have these conversations then with myself and Helena, but I'm like two months in the future. 
<laughs> and it's wow. it's it's really it's a gift to be able to to have that moment like that on something that deeply important to us. Um, and so I I know I will value these. I mean, I can't even imagine what it will be like to listen to them like five years from now. Right. Mm -hmm. what, 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 what will it be like to go back and think about where I was five years ago? I can do it with my journals, mm. but, but only a little. This is much more three dimensional. Right. Mm. Mm. I can tell you, I found my hard drive where I recorded my first podcast uh, series. That was, um, I think I started it in 2017, 2018 somewhere around that. And I just sat through listening to some bits and pieces yesterday doing sort of a digital, uh, clean out. And it is amazing mm -hmm. to see how, how, how much of a time capsule it is really. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and to sort of see, okay, I, I still think about that, but in a completely different way. Um, so, so you're in for a ride. Five years, it's going to be fun to listen to them again, for sure. I wonder um, what season it'll be then. <laughs> be season uh, seven or eight. <laughs> I, I wanted to speak a little bit about sort of your, your, because from my perspective, I've, I've barely listened to a full episode of, of the podcast. To be, to be honest, I've listened to bits and pieces of every single one of them, uh, as I've been editing them. Um, but what I've found is that they're very different conversations. Uh, there are many things that are similar to one another, as we've been speaking about sort of the meandering and none of you have any scripts or any notes or anything going into the conversation, really. Um, but I sort of want to, to put that on the table of how each and every one of you have perceived your conversations with Helena and then what you, Helena, have gained from, from sort of the red thread going through all of the conversations, but also the differences between them and sort of how they've cross-pollinated with one another, because I know that that's what you do. Um, so sort of what, what has your perception been of, of having, Steve, you spoke a little bit about the in, sort of looking inward and, and the work of yourself, Reddy and Inma. I would love to hear you say something about uh, your conversations as well. The silence is probably the longest I've had in all of our conversations together. It is incredible how we begin with absolutely no idea what we're going to talk about, right? And they usually start with me apologizing for being late or messing up on the call. <laughs> but it's incredible how there's never, like, that pregnant pause is almost like it's almost like we're spitting out babies one after the other. There is no pregnant pause, but there's still a whole bunch of babies coming out. I'm like, what the hell is happening? It just, and it's, it's, I love that experience of the whole finding. It's almost like we're just meandering through the wild and suddenly we chance upon that Frankenstein, right? And then all of a sudden I see Helena's eyes light up and ah, oh, she knows that, right? She, and she's like, oh, that's Frankenstein. Aha, uh -huh. right? And it's like, no, no one knows it. It's not like we're leading each other. I mean, it's a very strange kind of dance. No one's really leading. No one's really following. Or it's like we're taking turns. Or it's like, we don't even know. I mean, like the dance floor is changing. The dance keeps changing. And it's almost like the partners keep changing. Because every time we speak, we move from one topic to another. It's like we're two completely different versions. The same version of me five minutes ago is not the same version that's speaking on this topic right now at this point, right? Because there's the beauty with which Helena opens up this space, this playground for us to play in and converse and connect. 
is there is no taboo. There is nothing. There's, there's no sense of being chaperoned in this playground. No, okay. But we're not going to talk about that. We don't discuss that on this podcast. Like, I don't have to feel like I'm stepping on. Yeah, like, you know, what am I saying? I gotta bite my tongue. There's this freedom with which I can explore anywhere and anyhow. And she's along for the ride. I mean, she's, she's never shying away, no matter what topic comes up. And that is such a, you know, it's such a limitless feeling. It's just this feeling of being infinitely playful because I suddenly don't have to think of whether this is in the game, this according to the rules, is are we playing this right? Am I playing nice? Am I playing nasty? None of those. Like it's a very strange space, a very subtle space where there's we're not really we could be good, we could be bad, we could be saying things that are not so, you know, friendly, not so nice, taboo. But we're not labeling those as we're speaking. We're just speaking up. Arts out, we're speaking out true to ourselves. And I feel that sense of not being filtered, not masking myself, not having to, you know, contort my true emotions into something that is palatable to the audience, right? She never lets me get that feeling that, okay, ready now, you're going too far. You need to, like, I need, I need to pull the reins on you right now. You know, you're going off the leash. You know, this, I never get that feeling. It's like we're running wild through the forest, right? And it's beautiful. It's such a lovely, wonderful experience. And I'm always left delighted, exhilarated. And I'm just like, woo! You know, I just come back and I'm like, ah, that was a hell of a ride, right? Every single conversation feels like that. And I, I, I don't even know what I've said. I have no idea. It's almost like it's like in hindsight, I'm like, wow, that was awesome. While riding, while walking, while conversing together, we always just so deeply immersed in the moment that neither of us are truly, you know, concerned with what we're saying because we're just saying what comes out without us even funneling it through a certain space, a certain confined expression is just free spirited creation. Wow. So okay. Which is one of the reasons why Randy kind of stole an hour from me in one of our conversations. We had gone <laughs> like two and a half hours or two fifty the time before and I was thinking, well, we should really keep it down, you know two and a half not to just overwhelm everybody and when we finished up I was quite certain we had gone for two and a half hours and I was shocked when my quick time recording said three and a half hours like what the f how what it's like so yeah we have really been just in that flow you have been this season's frank me and frank were like this in the first season just just a flow that's what you and me have been having this season and it's so interesting how it is so different because me and izzy for instance there has been much more pregnant pauses Andy is also a person that has a completely different, so like, like energy. So it, it just, it is really different energies come together or get created when, you know, when you and me ready meet up, okay, that's what you get. When I meet up with, with Steve, we get something else. When I meet up with Issy, there's a third thing. And it's just quite fascinating to me how, how it differs or varies. And I also think that that's part of the beauty of this. It's part of the beauty. And this is also why for me, it's so important that we have the five conversations with each of you, because then it's not a one-off because then you wouldn't have been able to see that right? It's five 
time. So you get to kind of dip your toes into the energy of me already five times. You can see the similarities. You can see the uniqueness of what we create and what we kind of give birth to uh, and how it differs from what me, Matthew, and Inma have been given birth to. Um, so, yeah, totally with you on that. I like, I like because you don't have to prepare anything to go there. You just have to be you. And I like that. There is no, there is no an agenda and that may sounds, may sound, uh, we are at the beginning because what we are going to talk about, <laughs> but then, um, that is always something to talk about. And we know each other enough to, to be ourselves, to be able to be ourselves there and just say, when you think about what you are, what we are talking at, and sometimes is, it's just magic because something comes up and the three of us are like, mm -hmm. Actually, that's really good. <laughs> um, and because we have this background of solving problems, uh, before, usually we solve problems <laughs> within the conversation or, or ideas that may solve problems. And it's funny. It's, it's just a good time and... and, and being, being ourselves and it's beautiful. I like that. Mm. And, and it's, it is interesting, this thing of, of the people of, of this season. I know Matthew the longest, you and Ma after that, and then Steve, and then Andy, and then Izzy, and then Reddy. And some of you, I kind of know more of the, the history of you, your, you know, where you are in the world and your family backgrounds and your, you know, what you do in the world. It's, a, it's like ready. I know where you are in the world, but it's like, I still have no real idea what it is that you actually do. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I would not be able to say, how does Reddy make a living? How does Reddy put food on the table? I have no clue. Absolutely no clue. And I still feel that I know you. I still feel that I am able to be me, to, to just, you know. So there's a, there's a knowing without the knowing or a knowing without the facts, perhaps. That, that comes up in, 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 in this type of conversation that, Randy, you spoke about this in one of our first conversations about how, you know, you don't have to give all of the details, you know, you can just come and you, you can just play the way you are, the way kids do in the playground like they don't sit down and and you know it's like where are you from and what's the name of your dog and your mom and your sister and you know have you lived in that street forever you know it's like you don't need that you can just you want to play yeah sure and you go off um i like that and i like that it differs and that the the depth of this type of conversation is possible regardless of how long have I known somebody, regardless of, I mean, Mike in the first season, I've known her for eight, nine years, 10 years, nine years. No. So it, it's, it's available. It's like, it's, there's a, pos the possibility is there regardless of what the history is like. And I really, really like that. I'll, 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 I'll say that it goes one step further for me, that those of us who introspect and therefore are always monitoring everything we say, and is it in the right context and is it okay for others and all 
we have a tendency not to be able to be ourselves, except maybe with a very few, very intimate people. So it might just be your family and no one else or your family, and maybe one or two friends. And so with the beginning of the pro two workshop, which was what started it for me, it was like this open free for all where you were invited, encouraged. It's, it's the point to share more deeply. And then through some of the conversations that Helena yours with me around that time, we had a conversation, I think around either talk at Spawn or something else. And I realized that I could be much more completely myself than I am with most people. I, I mean, there's, there's some things I talk about in these conversations. I don't even really talk about with my family. They're not as interested as in, in, in it as we are. Right. So. The conversations have gradually opened me up to be able to have this kind of conversation, be this kind of genuine with a total stranger. As long as I have the sense that the environment is one that's going to support that. Right. And so that's why when you invited me to the creative community and I came over and saw who was there, you know, and I saw Matthew immediately and I saw in I saw you immediately. And I was like, oh, I can, I can be comfortable here. <laughs> this will be, this will be a good space. Right. And so, and it, and it has turned out to be so, and I've had several one-on-one -on -one conversations with other people from inside that community as a result of, you know, like you and ready connecting with each other on Twitter. And then it just, you know, Hey, we should, we should talk. Um, and those conversations are always interesting. They're not always easy. They're not always, they're, and they know, they're not always smooth, um, but they're always, they're always genuine. Like you were saying already, it's always, it's just, you just can be yourself. Right. Um, and the other thing in the, even when you don't intend to, you find yourself solving problems <laughs> one way or the other, you find yourself having a conversation about something that's important because you've been so genuine that you end up inevitably talking up or bringing up something that's a little bit a little bit more personally important to you than you normally would share with people or strangers. And you, you go ahead and put it out there. And then the next thing you know, you're, you're getting some insight from somebody else. Cause often we've been round and round on that problem in our own head and we don't have the material or the parts we need to solve that with. They're going to have to come from outside. Hmm. And this is the kind of group. And this is the kind of conversation where those parts could come from. Something could come in from outside and you'd be like, that's exactly what I was looking for. You know, you just pop that right in place and the thing springs right up and you have a different, a different result than you could have mm. ever gotten yourself. Mm. So these are, these have been great training, Helena, on, on being, being able to be more genuinely and simply myself, including in the listening to them afterwards and, and at first cringing about the sound of my voice, but by the end of 90 minutes of listening to it, I'm like. No, that's a, that's a, that's a, okay voice. It's a very expressive voice. It's good. <laughs> it's, it's not an okay voice. You have an absolutely amazing voice, Steve. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it is a re, you have a super, you have a radio voice. It's like, speak more. You have the, and, an and of course, awesome Because voice. I hear myself through my bones. I, <laughs> you all do. I don't, I don't sound like that to me. So, so like my first experience was similar to in the, it was like, who is that guy? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So thank you, Helena, for, for, you know, all that this, all that this does, because yeah. it's not as, 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 as interesting and wonderful as the experiences are and as as wonderful as the podcast themselves become as an actual little work of art right um there's this other whole thing going on where i find myself just more free i'm more free with my family even than i was so you know which is i guess what some people find therapy does for them as well right you have a conversation in a protected space and you learn you learn how to ride without training wheels and then you find you can do it someplace else Most of all, there's something interesting that happens when, when I'm having it, when on a podcast, the experience feels more like a Q and A, right? It feels like we just, it's not even like the question is being thrown at me because typically in, in the, in the real world, in the outside world, my guard is up, right? So in a sense, like there's this sense of safety in this space where I know the question is not necessarily thrown at me but it's just thrown out there right mm -hmm. and 
we're both on the same side looking at the question. You know, the question is like the stone that's thrown across the pond and it's skipping the water and just it's making those ripples out there. And we're both watching that. We're both observing that and we're both conversing about that, right? So I no longer feel, because in the real world, in, with real experiences, I keep saying real, not because it's physical, but because there's real consequences, right? This, this space is a safe space, right? Like that's the feeling I get. Like it, there's no consequence of saying something I shouldn't have said, right? Because the consequence is that we, in the real world, I will be judged and punished before we even discuss the context which it was said, right? Whereas in this space, we're exploring that context. Right? Oh, why do you say that? Is that what you really think? Mm. Why do you think so? Right? Like we're like playing with that question and with the answer. We're playing with the context in which that question is being construed. Right? We're playing with all of this together. And we're playing like playful, you know, children who are just exploring with curiosity the world around us. The perception our perceptions to this world around us, to the events that's happening to us, to people around us, to the world at large, there's so much, you know, serious conversation happening in that space, right? And I can relax, I can open up, I can explore, because anywhere else, anything I say will be, you know, just like, you know, there's already judge, jury, and executioner just waiting to slam that verdict the moment those words escape my mouth, oh, you said that, you couldn't be, you're cancelled. Right? There's, like, there's that sense of fear that creeps up. And it, it, it doesn't even have to be like something that's in the larger world, but it could even just be with family and friends and like a conversation where I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. I, I might have to take a step back without getting a, a deeper level of understanding of what's happening. Right? It reaches a level where I either overstep my boundaries and then you know i'm left feeling guilty for that right and or i don't even cross my boundaries i don't even cross you know say what i'm supposed to say because i'm now limiting inhibiting my own expression because i'm afraid of the consequences that could be just because of my past conditioning that the last time i said this things didn't go well so maybe this time i won't say it again right so and that's typically that happens to me, not just in, you know, in the larger professional world, but also in a sense of personal interactions, because it's almost like we don't have this space. We don't like imagine that three and a half hours. It's really hard to spend three and a half hours, even with family, because it's so hard to get each other's attention for three and a half hours. Like within three and a half hours, it's like, oh, well, not today. I got something has come up or, you know, it's like, it gets too heated and then the door gets slammed and things happen and or it just fades away or, you know, there's, it's really hard to keep that simple, playful engagement mm -hmm. space of interaction where we're not necessarily going so intense that it, you know, both of us want to walk out of it or it's not so casual that neither of us are in it in the first place. We're just sitting in the same room, but we're not necessarily in an interaction per se. Right. So like you said, Steve, like I'm able to, you know, use this experience that I had here and I'm like, ah, so now when I have this interaction with my friend, maybe I can mm -hmm. slow it down a little, maybe I can make more time uh, for it. Maybe, you know, we could try it this way. Maybe I throw out what I'm trying to say as a question rather than as a statement. So, you know, this starts setting the tone or the standard for an ideal interaction for like this feels like a play date to me. like it's like helena and i have this play date and we're going to get together and play what are we going to play about i don't know what are we going to play with i don't know but are we going to play yes that's all i know for sure right but that's that's all i need to begin with that's all we need to begin with and now if i if i go into any interaction whether it's in the real world personally, professionally, regardless, I can now try to reframe it. Okay, imagine I'm having a podcast. I'm on a podcast with this person. How would we go about it? Right. For sure. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. It's, um, 
it's funny because uh, uh, at the same time uh, that we have been doing this, um, I have the feeling of, of I'm getting better at it, at it. So it's kind of a training too. Uh, in, in, and it's not uh, something that uh, is not my goal. It's not a goal that is implicit, but as a result, um, if someone else uh, invites me to a podcast or or if I want to participate in another post podcast or if I want to create a podcast, I feel more confident to do it thanks to this experience. And it's kind of, it's kind of interesting because probably another person or, or someone, something else uh, would have come and said, oh, do you want to participate in a podcast? And I say, no. Mm -hmm not interested uh but because we know each other we know we have been having conversations for for one year <laughs> before this happening um yeah yeah let's do it why not it's it's, it's gonna be fun for us and it's, it may be um fun for someone else <laughs> Sure. And also the language, uh, it's like a meta part of it or is like the word we, sometimes we even invented words when we had the podcast, <laughs> oh, this should be called this, <laughs> things like that. The play, <laughs> that, the playful, the playfulness <laughs> with the language is also there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's something that that you've all been doing, and I think it's it's. Uh, I mean, the podcast is called Tankespian, which is something that none of you had heard of prior to to the podcast or prior to meeting Helena, possibly. Um, and I think that's a, that's an important part of of, of the playing. Um, since you're meandering. You, you need to find or or sometimes make up words to describe what you're finding um, which i think is is so so important for for the people listening because they might have found themselves meandering to the same place not having the words to describe it and all of a sudden there is one um, so i think that that's even though it's quite quite hard to to read out from the tran our automatically generated transcript at some times, I mean, Tank Espian is is I, I usually send over the versions of Tank Espian that I get out of my my transcript program, which is usually Tank Espian or um, what's the other one that usually pops up, Elena? Do you remember? I've kind of zoned out from them so i don't remember but, but they Tonka pop Spian, up yeah is yeah. a common one uh and so i don't even know what tonka or spion means so no <laughs> so i'm guessing that we have to keep at it a few more seasons and then descripts automatic training program ai system <laughs> oh. will have picked up on the word uh, so when it is actually written the way it's supposed to be written, then we know we've made it or have made it. <laughs> For right. sure. You're For on your sure. way to being the dictionary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, one of the things that I've been noticing and, and I can, I, this is something that I can get a little bit, um, self-conscious about is how. Braiding Sweetgrass is a book that I've been reading during many of these conversations and it pops up over and over and over again. And I'm, I can self-consciously think, oh, the listeners will just go, oh no, not that one again. And then I don't really give a shit because I've still brought it up, right? Because it makes sense in the, in the setting, in the context of where the meander is going. But it might as well be 
that somebody else who's listening is also reading it and can then pick up on it and kind of feel this sense of, again, similarity or there's something that, there is something that keeps all of this together. Because if you look at the, the pod descriptions, I think braiding sweetgrass is probably the most common link that I've used and I've used it in, I'm not, I think I've used it with everybody. So that that book has come up with all of the five conversations of this season. Uh, well. So, and, and, and that is also part of the, when I listen back to the conversation, Steve, I can tell, oh, those were, I, I had those conversations back to back or, you know, the day after each other or the same week, because I am in the same space. This is what's top of mind for me. Um, I spoke about dreams with, with Reddy, and then I had a conversation with Andy. And of course we spoke about the same dream or if it was you, Steve, it's like, so there's that thing. And he's like, that's also part of life. So for me, it's like, I haven't, I haven't trained myself to stop those impulses. Oh, I can't do this because I spoke about this when the last conversation I had with Steve, I can't do this then with Andy. It's like, I haven't, I haven't trained myself to stop those impulses. I just go with it. Oh. No, precisely. And I won't, um, oh. because, because it is part of, part of life. That is also then like, like you say, it's a testament. These, these conversations are a time frame, you know, this is what was going on at that time. Um, and yeah, it was, <laughs> um, another thing I really value about all of these conversations about the creative community in general is the ability to encounter other people who are being so genuine and so, uh, that feel so empowered to say what they truly feel and think that when I'll say something that's sort of one-sided and someone else says yes, but, or yes, and, and they add the other, the other side or another side, because oftentimes it's not that binary. Right. Um, and in my, you know, you're one of the people that frequently has a point of view that's the most different from my own, which I value greatly. <laughs> um, and part of that, part of that difference is the fact that you are a woman. And I'm conscious of that at times and other times it's not about that at all. It's mm -hmm. about just a very different way that you have of encountering the world. You have a more open and inclusive seeing things in a larger context and welcoming and embracing a much larger context. You have your arms out and around things in a way that I find, um, sometimes impossible to understand, even it's so broad. Um, and I, I value that immensely because it's, I've always been a person who analyzes and slices and dices things. That's, that's my, I'm, I, uh, the other half of my head is not artist, it's engineer. Mm -hmm. And so I tend to do that. And so your, your outlook has been so informing. Um, and it's brought me into a whole lot of understanding that sometimes this from a, a more female point of view, it's enabled me to discover many more female impulses inside myself, which has been massively helpful for my own, you know, interior well-being. Um, and so again, this, this space in these podcasts, but in the creative community as well is, um, is powerful in that way. It's not just that I, I feel it, but to share, but the really open sharing of the others ready to go back to your playground analogy, right? When kids are playing and they're truly being themselves and you've encountered this very imaginative group of kids, right. That you're playing with, not only does time stop so that, you know, you, you, you inevitably end up in trouble at home because you, you get home too late. Right. But you've also got this, there's a, there's a kind of magic going on that you cannot reproduce any other way. And you can't get back together with that same group of kids a week later and make that happen again, exactly the same way, though you may try, <laughs> right? 
But the fact is that this group just, it just spontaneously happens so often. It's like, this is the playground. I want to keep coming back to it because whether it's in small groups like this or the, you know, the text, text and image kind of context of the creative community or whatever, because that kind of play just sort of happens more often here than anywhere else I can think of. Yeah. Wow. That's for sure. Hey, I'm son. thinking. Yeah, sorry. Go, go. No, I was thinking, I was um, just picturing uh, in my head the, the podcast as a fabric and, and every one of the pods, the, di the in different pods as part of that fabric. And I, I've been listening to some of them and I want to keep going and listen to another ones that I haven't, but, um, and you're right, uh, Steve, when, when you said I'm talking to them, when they are talking, I am, I doing that. And mm -hmm. actually when, when I do that, I write it down on the, on the, ah. on the comments. And I see, I, I do feel that I, our pod or, or the pod where Matthew, Helena and myself are, is not just an standing alone. It is part of a fabric and I can feel that around me. Uh, it's, it makes me, I don't know. It makes me feel even more comfortable or even more be belonging there. It, and, and it is, it is fun how it is, it is really a fabric and the fabric goes wider. Me and Izzy had a conversation where we spoke about languages and she said something about Dutch and Swedish and English being Germanic languages. And I just went, oh, I'd better not say something because I have a friend who will just tell me that I'm totally wrong because that's happened a couple of times during, and then on, on March 9th, I got, uh, I got a comment from him saying, yes, Dutch, Swedish, English are all Germanic languages. So it's like, now I know he's been listening to that episode, right? So he's also a part of the fabric of this. It's like, you, you get these, I've been reading your comments. Um, in my, from you listening to me and Izzy, and it's been so, again, it, it widens and broadens the mm. fact that somebody else comes just like what you say, uh, ready about you having the conversation with you. And then when you have the conversation with me, all of a sudden you get another perspective. That's what your comments have been in my, on me and, and Izzy's, uh, episodes. It's like. Okay, here I get, and all of a sudden it, it like, it broadens, it widens, it opens up and there's a, there's a bigger structure to it, mm. um, that, you know, it's, it's, it's quite fascinating to, to be a part of in a way that I, I sense it, you know, mm. uh, we're all a part of that, but, but to be aware of it, to sense into it, to, to kind of hook onto these different little things and just, yeah, it's, it is, it, that is part of that magic for me that I can see this, um, this, this web of, of connectivity, um, like you, you know, when you can be out in the, in the forest and you don't really see anything. And then the sun shifts or a cloud passes and, and all of a sudden you see all of these spider webs and there's like, uh. you know, they were there before too. You just couldn't see them. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's what, what a lot of the experiences and interactions I get from this do. It's like, they help me see what is there. Uh, yeah. and I really enjoy that. And there's also a component of sound, the sound of our voices that for me, well, with Izzy and Helena, it's just like, oh my God, it's so good because the sound of the voices when, when they are uh, talking is just so intimate and they are talking about intimacy and it's like, wow, 
for me, it becomes like the thread of the fabric, the sound of our voices. Yeah, so, yeah, amazing. That's a really beautiful analogy. Elena, I wonder what the, what the whole concept will be like several years from now, for instance, when like any other network, it continues to grow like that. And at some point it reaches some critical mass where it starts to draw other things into it just mm -hmm. because of its size. And at that point it will, it, it, it you may actually, I, I, I suspect lose some control of it. You've, you've already got a, only a limited amount of control of it now. Right. And you deliberately by design, part of its beauty is that you made it in a way that it's, it's, it's another book I'm reading is anti-fragile. It's very anti-fragile, right? I mean, it's designed yeah. almost for the more disruption that comes into it, the better it gets. And so at some point it's, it's going to take on some additional life of its own. And I'm really wondering what that will be like, what will, what, what will happen then and what, and how it'll affect then your ongoing, your ongoing work and your ongoing seasons. And, and the, the spread in the, the, the group conversation we had, me and, uh, me and Kasman after the first season, I don't remember who said it, if it was Gary, if it was already in the, in the first of those two, this, you know, who would you want to have five times five conversations with, you know, to, to just take that aspect of it and go out, you know, you don't have to do a podcast. You don't have to put it out there, but just, you know, is there some, you know, my next door neighbor or my grandmother who's, you know, getting old and frail. It's like, who do you want to have a five by five conversation with? Because just that aspect of it kind of also opens up for this like again, who knows where that will lead, what that will impact, what that will ripple into. Um, You've all the sense been... of nurturing. What oh, did you say, Brendan? No, you go, uh, you go. Uh, I was thinking there's a sense of like nurturing the because I feel like this is growing. Like I can sense that this is something that's a connection that's growing. It's continuing to grow. It's not something that's a finite experience. It's not something that's, you know, that's on its way out or it's, or it's decaying. It rather, it feels like something fresh, something young and something that's still in its growing stages, right? And I can sense there's this, uh, a certain nurturing in it that Helena is putting in. She's not just looking at this as something that's, oh, we're just going to enjoy this. Who knows what happens later, right? There's always that, in, that possibility that who knows what's going to happen later, but not from a fatalistic perspective, but more from a perspective of infinite growth. Where could this go? Oh, wow, possibly. But that said, I feel like she is investing a lot of effort, intention, and affection into, into nurturing this, this whole seniors of thoughts, nurturing this whole collective of mind, thoughts, of conversations, right? Like the whole, it takes a village experience that raised, right? And it's something that grows when it's not just held tight, but it also needs to be held. Like you hold it too tight and it just, it's destroyed. But if you don't hold it at all, then it's not going to have what it needs to grow. Right. So just that right amount of contact connection is vital, but too much. And you know, the whole experience gets molly cuddling the child at the child grow up stronger for us that you can completely let go of the child and the child just could go wayward and lose itself right just that right amount of affection right amount of contact nurturing as a community and i don't even know the the ins and outs of what's happening in this space but 
from what I've experienced as a one-on-one -on -one interaction and what's happening right now in this multiplayer interaction, mm -hmm. this is the feeling that I'm getting. Yeah. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I mean, you've all you've all been onto this already. But but sort of as as a um rounding off question for for this conversation, I would like to, to sort of for all of you to speak a little bit about what you what you bring with you from these conversations and from this series what's something that you could be tangible could be intangible um sort of what's what's your takeaway from having had these conversations possibilities I would have to say for me, it's a kind of confidence. See, Helene, you've got us well trained. We're all, we're all coming up with the word. <laughs> for those who don't know that, in the, in the Patreon community of Tankistan, in the monthly meetups, we have 90 minutes. And at the end, I always want to hear what people have as their takeaway. And we usually have the most interesting conversations. It's like, you know, there's like two and a half minutes left. And then I have to say, everybody, you can only do a word. Otherwise, you know, that would take too long. So uh, Steve and Emma are both regulars in the Patreon community. Well so trained. yes, they're very well trained. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, actually it came I... out like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll say delight. Like I've always left with a big ass smile on my face and it just feels so wired and charged up. So delight would be the word I'd, I'd, I'd leave. You know, it's like there's a lot to, you know, to take away because like I, I literally feel like I've plundered and pillaged the whole experience and like, you know, sucked the marrow out of the experience out of those three and a half hours. It's like I haven't left anything in that on that plate it's like i've literally wiped the plate clean you know slobbered over that meal and you know practically picked up the plate and licked it off it's absolutely nothing left to take away left to take away from that experience because i've taken it right i feel that saturated and thing but in one word did like like i just feel ah, ah, Incredibly delightful. Like I, I feel that, right? And that, that, that's that's my take. Lovely. What's my takeaway from this season? I, 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 I think it's a sense of wonder. It's like. I should know better by now, but I don't give a fuck. It's like, it is a sense of wonder. It is that, that we can come together, you know, regardless of who we are, um, without having an agenda, only knowing that we're here to meet. No? And the most amazing conversations ensue where I have, again, like I, I spoke about this in season one with Mike, I think that I'm in therapy and I've been in therapy for a year and a half. So during the year that I've been doing this series, I have been in therapy. And it comes up over and over again with all of you. It's come up in, in, in various forms. And it is what you, Brady, were speaking about. 
I get to see, to solidify, to hear myself repeat what is going on, what's been going on in therapy. I get to say it, phrase it. I get to see somebody's reaction to it. I get to hear that yes and me and Steve's, our last conversation was just like, man, we are so on parallel tracks right now. It's it's almost scary how how like, wow, we are just the same. And your landscape looks completely different than my landscape. And it's the same with Bunny Ears experience, right? It's a very shared experience, even though colors, shapes, creatures are different. Um, so a sense of wonder is, is, uh, is, is, is like, that's, that's what I take away every time. The sense of wonder that it's possible, you know, it really, maybe this is disparaging. It doesn't really take much, you know, you bring people together and just what's possible is just. It's wondrous. So that's, that's mine. Um, and, and this, this sense of having deepened relationships of, 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 of having invested in relationships with all of you, of, of having that sense of nourishment. It's like, we've really put some nourishment onto these relationships that feels like, oh, they will carry they will carry me for a long time and, and they will be for a long time. It's like, I have a hard time seeing how I would say bye-bye to any of you any time before I die, you know, because there's, there's this, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's like a nodule on, on the, the, the. What do you call it? The weave of life. It's like, here's the nodule of me and Steve, and here's the nodule of me and Man Matthew, and here's the nodule of me and Brady, and here's the nodule of me and Caspian, because, you know, he's one of my, one of my closest friends as well. So doing this with him is also great fun. Um, and it is nourishment. Sure is. Isn't that a great note to end on? Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank, Thank you, you both all. For that. Thank you. Helen.